Hey, it's Hawkin with Top Don. Today we're going to do an introduction video and walkthrough on the new Top Don Phoenix Nano. The Phoenix Nano brings an unparalleled amount of value to the industry. Uh, what you'll find unique about this tool is the nice, convenient, smaller form factor. Uh, I know personally I like to have a few of the smaller tablets because they're a little bit easier if you have to take multiple tools with you as a mobile technician. Uh, there's a lot of value in the corded style that the Nano brings because there's no dongle to lose. Uh, I know that that can be a concern for some technicians working in the field, uh, but what you'll find that you like most about the corded is that of course it will charge while it's plugged into the vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and show you some live on car features, walk you through all the different menus like we usually do in our walkthrough videos. Okay, so now we're going to take you through the Phoenix Nano and show you basically all of the menus that are available on the tool. Now we're going to start on the very bottom banner here and we have a back button which allows us to go back a screen uh, every time we hit that button. We have a quick screenshot shortcut button, which is always available to us, very convenient. We have our VCI status. Uh, the VCI status is only going to turn green when we are attempting to connect to a vehicle, uh, not when it's just baseline connected to the vehicle and we're not actively engaged in anything. We also have our app close feature because this tool actually has open Android so we can get into the back side of the tool. Uh, so we'll go back into the app here. And then we have our home button, which also takes us to the home screen of the tool. Then we're going to do like we normally do on our videos, where we're going to work backwards. So we have our user info, which can also be accessed through the little gear in the top right corner. We'll take you through that menu briefly. We have my report up in the top left here. That is basically where you're going to find the records of any reports that you've generated with the tool. We have our VCI information, which will provide your serial number. So if, for instance, you are registering this tool with AutoAuth, that's where you will find the serial number you're going to use. We also have our activation link. We have our firmware fix. Firmware fix is usually something that will be used by our support personnel if there is connectivity issues with the tool. Uh, that is something you can try if you need to. This tool is enabled for ADOS, so if you want to add on the ADOS software, that is an additional fee, but once you do that, there is a selection criteria for which ADOS equipment you use. Right now, the only option is the ADOS mobile frame. Sample allows us to review any data samples that we've captured with the tool. Obviously, we have not captured any yet. My order is for accessing the store. Basically, if you do a renewal through a storefront, uh, then we also have our renewal or subscription card entry. So when you go to renew the software on the tool, this is where you will enter the code you purchase. Profile allows us to edit any of our information related to our account. Change password allows us to change our password, although I am not going to do that, so we'll back out of that. Settings takes us to a second level of settings where we can change our units in the top left. We can change our shop information and enter all of that in here. Clearing the cache is something, again, the support personnel may ask you to do at some point in time, but generally not a feature we're going to use. About is where we can check the system itself for updates. And you can also see that the diagnostic application, the app itself, we can set that to run uh, when it is on a Wi-Fi network, and it is set for that. We also have our diagnostic software auto update, and we want to leave that on as much as possible because that's going to automatically update our tool to the latest software for each vehicle and function. Device account management allows us to add additional sub accounts. So if we want to add a technician account in addition to the owner account, we can do that in this menu. Logging out also allows us to log out of the tool to disable functionality if we wish. The last thing we have is diagnostic software clear, and that's something you're typically only going to do at the request of a support professional. So we're back in our main menu. Our feedback button allows us to submit logs. So if we do have an issue with the tool or we are requesting an upgrade of a feature, we can hit the feedback button and attach all related data to the issue or the request, including pictures, screen recordings, and log files from the vehicle. This will store the last 20 vehicles that you've connected to, so you don't always have to do it right while you're at the car. You can do it at the end of the day, as long as you don't work on more than 20 cars in a day. Uh, but that is a great tool, and we encourage you to submit feedback if you run across issues, as our engineers are always working to improve and upgrade the functionality of the tool. 
History allows us to go in and look at any information logged on the tool based on what vehicles we have connected to. So we can reconnect to the same vehicle through this menu. We can also look at reports and other information uh, that we have saved from that particular vehicle. Then we have our library, which contains a variety of various shortcuts to a number of different functions and features for the tool. We've got web browser shortcut, uh, shortcut to our, brow or our gallery of pictures. Uh, we can look at videos that we've saved. All sorts of information like that is available through the library. We can also view our vehicle coverage, which is a very nice shortcut to have in here. Any other files you save can also be accessed through here as well. The support button is if you are dealing with any of our support professionals and they need to connect to your tool remotely to assist you, you can hit that support button and that will give you a code that you can provide to our support professionals. They will be able to log into your tool so long as you have internet connectivity and you will be able to receive remote support. Now this is only for tool support, not for diagnostic support at this time. Update allows you to check your tool for software updates. Now, if you have your automatic update turned on in the settings menu, this will automatically update the software on the tool. And you can see here, there is no available updates as this tool has automatically done those. Modules takes you into supported additional tooling that connects to this tablet. The IMMO programmer is the T-Ninja box. The T-Ninja box can be used for a variety of different functions and features, including module cloning on many applications, as well as key adding, deleting, and all keys lost on other specific applications, as well as EEPROM and MCU reading. And that software is already on the tool. You simply need to purchase that additional hardware. The ADOS menu will take you into ADOS. So if you purchase an ADOS activation for your tool, that will allow you to do ADOS calibrations with your Phoenix Nano. The services menu is a shortcut like you find on all of our other tools that has a variety of quick services that you may run across in a variety of circumstances, typically in the course of normal service of a vehicle. Uh, let's say that you are replacing a throttle body. Throttle relearn will typically be found in here. If you're replacing a battery, frequently battery relearns will be found in here. Uh, crankshaft position sensor relearning will typically be found in here. Basically many shortcuts to common services. Now, if you don't find the service you're looking for in here, remember, we can always go into the scan or auto scan menu and build the vehicle, then go to the module that would typically be responsible for that function, and it will usually be found in the special functions menu for that module if it is not found in the services menu. Now, when we're going to connect to the vehicle, we can either build the vehicle manually, so in many situations, we may encounter older vehicles where VIN acquisition does not help ID the vehicle accurately. When that happens, we can go in here and build the vehicle manually. We can also access OBD mode in this particular menu. You can sort the menu by vehicle region. You can also search in the top right corner. You also have the ability to do a VIN scan using the camera on the back of the tool or typing in the VIN manually. For today, we're just gonna do auto scan. Once we hit auto scan, the VCI cable will connect to the data link connector on the vehicle, pull the VIN number from the vehicle when possible, and decode the VIN. We'll give the tool just a moment here to complete that operation. Oh, it's a push button start vehicle and it's switched off. That's why we're not decoding the VIN. There we go. Switch the key switch back on and now it recognizes the vehicle. So we have a 2013 Dodge Journey, and you can see our engine and our VIN number. And of course, we always wanna pay attention to that VIN. Make sure it matches the plate on the vehicle. And if it does not, uh, then you might wanna double check to see if a used module has been installed in the vehicle or something of that nature. We have a couple of different options here. Quick access allows us to go directly into a module if we wanna just go in and do a service function. Scan history here. You can see if there's any other reports that we have generated on this vehicle previously. And then diagnostic is the menu you're typically going to spend your time in. So we're going to hit diagnostic and we'll be presented with a variety of menu options depending on the specific vehicle application. As always, we want to make sure we have good strong connection to the internet while using our tool to ensure the best optimized function. We're going to hit OK. And we have a few variety of options here. 
We have our health report, which is typically what we're gonna do if we just wanna scan all systems and generate a report. System scan is just essentially the tool pinging all of the modules to see if they exist on the network. System selection allows us to go in directly to one specific system. If we know exactly we only want to talk to one module and deal with one module, we can do that. Special functions, you'll see, is a shortcut to a variety of quick services, similar to the maintenance menu from the main screen. Last, you have your ADOS menu. If you have ADOS enabled on your tool and have purchased that upgrade, you will be able to use that for ADOS functions on the vehicle where it is supported. We're just going to go into the health report for demonstration purposes today. The ignition is on. It's going to scan all the modules on the vehicle. And of course, because this Phoenix Nano is a hardline cabled unit, it will scan the vehicle very quickly by comparison to most other tools out there. Now, the other thing you want to keep in mind is the speeds of the scan that you have with the tool is going to be partially dependent on the speed of the vehicle's data network. So older vehicles typically have slower data networks and will take longer to scan. Newer vehicles will typically have faster data networks and go faster at scanning. So now we have a variety of different options. We can rescan it. We can clear the codes directly from the screen. We can compare to other reports we've saved. Uh, the help button will just take you to some generic information if you want to select a given uh, fault code or issue. So we can hit help. Sometimes there will be DTC help, sometimes there will not. This is a very generic database, but the tool or the function we're going to use most often will be our report button. So we will type in our odometer, and today we have 137.280 for miles. And we can hit our little arrow there and hit OK. We haven't entered any shop info, so there's nothing else here. Hit OK. And then we have our report, which can be easily emailed directly via the tool after we save it. We can also share it and email it directly from here, or we can hit the QR code and pull it up on our uh, device, our phone, our tablet, anything of that nature if we have something with a camera that can read a QR code. So you can see here's all the list of the different modules and the specific fault codes. You can also see there's a little Google link here. So if that is a fault code where a quick Google search will turn up anything, we can hit that and it will find any information that happens to be on Google related to that specific fault code, which is kind of a nice little convenient shortcut. Now up on the top right here, we do have our shortcut to get back to the main screen. So that's that little door with the arrow. So if we hit that, it'll take us all the way back out to the main screen of the tool. We have a print button here, which we can use to print variety of information. We also have our feedback button. So if we do run into an issue with anything on the software or we think of something we would like to see upgraded or improved, that's the shortcut we can use to submit the feedback directly from the screen, which can be very quick and easy to do. And of course, that always ensures that the tool gets upgraded uh, as timely as possible. The home button will take you back to the main screen without exiting the diagnosis. So if you want to go to something else on the menu temporarily, but then go back into your uh, module to talk to it again, you can do that. So if you wanted to toggle between, let's say, service information and the scan, you could go here, go to your browser, look up your service information, then go back and you're right back into the modules still talking to them. Now we'll show you a couple other features before we wrap up today. So let's look at just the PCM. Now remember, the different menus that you have in each module are going to be variable based on the vehicle brand, the specific module, and the specific year. So here you can see we have a variety of different options. We've got uh, misfire monitors and OBD monitors. We've got some OBD functions. We have system tests, which is something that's typically going to be a comprehensive all-in-one automated test. We have special functions that may contain things such as relearns uh, or things of that nature. We have configuration reading. Uh, configuration reading is typically something you'd see for module replacement. Actuation tests would be bi-directional control, so switching on and off components and things of that nature. 
And then of course we have our fairly standard functions, which is module information. So this will tell us things like the potential part number or the software number on the tool, uh, or excuse me, on the module, the VIN number that's written in that module if applicable and things like that. So this can be good for verification purposes to make sure nobody's been in there replacing modules or something of that nature. Of course, we have our standard reading fault codes and clearing fault codes menu, and then we have read data stream. So we're just gonna show you a quickly read data stream so you can kind of see how that works. Uh, graphing data is a very frequent request a lot of people will ask about. So if we hit this here and we hit okay, you can see here we have the ability to graph a bunch of data PIDs and you can see we can fit a couple more on the screen. We can do up to eight at once as you can see the tool tells us. So if we wanted to add a couple of more, we could. We can combine up to four and graph them simultaneously, as you can see there. And if we want to hit a report, we can get a momentary capture of whatever that data is, and that momentary capture will write that data to a report, so a snapshot in time. And of course, that can be convenient if you find something wrong with a vehicle and you catch it in the act, so to speak. You can do that report button and you can save that. Uh, you can also save your samples like this. And you can put in the specific condition of the vehicle, save your sample, and now this has been saved and it also logs a, a min and a max value. Now we can go back. We also have the ability to email that report just like we would when we do a DTC scan, diagnostic trouble code scan. So you can see there's quite a variety of functions here with related to data stream. Uh, make sure you explore this fully so you can see all the different functions and features, but up to eight data PIDs at once and with a hard line connection to the tool instead of wireless, you're going to get really, really good graphing on this particular tool. I'm sure you're gonna find that very useful. Uh, so the tool really does have a lot of functionality and is an exceptional value based on everything it can do. Uh, Broad-based coverage as well and compatibility. Oh boy, that's loud, isn't it? <laughs> you're not gonna forget the tool in the car. But uh, the great, great compatibility across a wide number of vehicles and a great value for your money. So if you do have questions on what we've covered here in the video or something maybe we did not cover today, you know, never hesitate to reach out to your support team uh, in your given region, uh, your local distributor. You can leave comments in the videos. We always check those. Or of course, our Facebook users group, you can ask questions of us as well. Just wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch our introduction and walkthrough video on the Top Don Phoenix Nano. Get with your local distributor today to place an order for this tool.